Alright guys, welcome back to another M Crater video. Today what we're going to be covering is the Forge Energy um, and Fluid Blocks. Uh, now, there's a whole bunch of blocks that we can find under the Block Procedures and then Fluid Energy, or Energy and Fluid. So these are a lot of blocks that we're going to be covering today. Uh, a lot of them, when we get to the Fluid part of things, which is mostly down here, it will pretty much be consistent through the energy part. So once you have the idea of what the energy is doing, you'll basically understand how this is working. Um, I'm not too familiar with the fluid. I haven't worked with it as much as I have with energy. And in the future, in the next couple weeks, I'll be explaining how to take this workspace that I have for the cables. I have a whole bunch of cables uh, for this thing. I'll link to that video that I made these cables with. Um, it could use its own updated version, but um, I'll cover that in a little bit, probably next episode or whatever. But um, today I want to just cover the blocks so you guys have an understanding of what they do. And then we can kind of start working on to the explaining how the cable system works. Um, not so much how to set it up, but you can always go into the workspace and go to the cables and then I'll explain how, how it works and basically what procedures you need. It's all run from one procedure, the update tick, and then there's the energy part, and then there's the model updater, which is basically it, to make sure the blocks all align in properly and stuff like that. But there are some things that you will need to do. I did create a PDF a while ago to explain it, but I uh, could use a rework. So let's go ahead and just start covering this stuff. Um, if I've covered it before, uh, there is a little bit of a difference. There is any direction from what I understand, this would be for allowing other mods outside of M Crater to have support for, um, this particular thing. So far as I know, you can't actually set the direction of your cables, what it can support and stuff like that, or whatever. That's why I created the cable system that I did do have. So um, you don't really need to worry about it, but I will explain how to use that later if you do come across the, the chance that you do need it. So for the first two blocks are to test if the block at a certain location can receive or uh, extract energy. So for example, um, you would use the XYZ and offset the location to test for that block. So a quick example would be, we would just create a if statement and say we wanted to test if the block below um, can, can uh, extract energy. So we would basically go ahead and go negative one and then we wanted to, to test for the direction that the cable can basically go so basically what we would want to do is we would want to go up because up would be the face that the cable or the block would be sending energy so extracting energy so for example if you have a block like right here and then this is your top block and that's your bottom like we're looking at it from the side right then we would want the top face of this block, the bottom block, to basically receive energy. So that's where this comes in. It would basically be the top here. And then it's the coordinates is negative one for the block below. Now, if you were to set the coordinates for the top, then this would change to down. And it would basically be the polar opposite of the direction that you're going. So uh, east is positive y, that would actually be west. So for example, uh, we would go here and that would be east and then we would make sure that this is west and same would be for if you wanted it to be west you would set it to east and so on so negative z is actually north so this would be south and then if you wanted north then it would be positive z so that would be south this would be north okay so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense uh, any direction you can leave that in if you wanted to but it might not have the same effect uh, for what you need all the time so keep that in mind uh, the other block uh, this is for basically extracting energy so basically it will take from um, the other one in the list is for receiving energy so basically if the block 
at that location can receive it. Now generally um, how Forge Energy works is it will attempt to send energy rather than try to pull energy. So in most cases you would want to make sure that this this would be the one that you would want it want to use because it's receiving you're testing if it can receive the energy not extract it so in most cases you'll need this one all right so that's that first one and then we got a couple other blocks down here so we got the uh yellow extract uh extract 100 energy from block at and then xyz from side and then there's that side thing i already covered how to use that so don't need to worry about that if it has storage so this would be mostly used for removing energy from the current block. Um, it does still kind of play effect if you do need it, but um, most of the time you'll be sending energy, which is this block down here, and basically that will allow you to send it to another block at a different location, and then you would basically extract the energy from the current block. So uh, you can also generate energy directly from the block itself, so for example, um, you don't even need storage technically in it. You can just test for the direction and send it. Uh, that would be mostly used for a generator case scenario. So basically, if you're having a generator of some sort, maybe solar panel or something like that, then you would want to passively send the energy whenever there is daylight, obviously. So that would uh, play a role into actually sending it. And then you would... Um, not even need the storage. This would basically be more used for a battery scenario um, when you need to send and receive so or extract. So basically if you have a battery, you'll have it already in storage so you'll need to extract that energy after you send it. So for example, what you would do is something like this. Uh, if you were creating a battery and then you would need to uh, extract and also send because they, they don't actually tap into the um uh the actual energy itself they don't know how much energy they actually have for some reason these aren't linking up i don't know why oh i think it's all buggy for some reason i'm not sure why yeah like i can't even move that block i don't know it's just like frozen okay uh we will just reboot that uh thing Sometimes I've been noticing some weird bugs with uh, the blocky thing, but I haven't been able to narrow it down. Like, for example, there's like click animation that gets stuck sometimes and stuff like that. I'm not sure what's going on there, but I don't know. Um, all right, so basically you would send the energy and basically extract it. And there it is. It's doing it again. Weird. Yeah, I'm not sure why this is doing it it seems to break for some reason all right not sure how i fixed it but i think you just have to like save the procedure before it happens i'm not sure but it, it's linking up now so it's no big issue i think it might just be the thing from it not being saved i'm not sure i'll try playing around with it later all right so uh basically you would send her the energy and then extract the amount from the block now if you're sending the energy you would basically go ahead and set the direction so for that case that it's going downwards then you would set the direction and you would go and set say okay send energy down below and then you would extract the amount the same amount of energy from the block so that's basically it um now that's obviously not the entire system. Uh, there's other blocks in here that are really important. Uh, you can get the energy capacity of the block. So this is really good for if you need to know if there is enough energy in the block or not um, in order to run a certain script uh, in such, uh, oh, pardon me, capacity. So that basically means how much it can fill up to. So in some cases you might need to test for that. In most cases though, you probably won't. Um, but you might need to in some cases. So basically how much the block can actually store, uh, this would be the block to test for that. So you would be able to set the direction and all that if you needed to do it manually or whatever. Um, the get energy from block, this is what you would basically use to test if there's enough room. But again, there's other blocks down here, uh, test extract and test send. Um, the test send one is the most important one. 
because what it will allow you to do is it will basically save the remainder um, or save the amount that it can actually send to a variable. So for example, with these two blocks, what you can do is you can create a local variable uh, will be a number variable for this one. And we'll just say test. Uh, you could say probably the direction or other things like that, like um, uh, send north. You could do something like that or down. Uh, we'll just go down with this one. If I can spell today. Down and number. And then we can basically put this onto that block. So uh, we would go basically like this test we would be testing for how much we can actually send and um, I suggest keeping this around how much the block can actually send itself uh, this will be important for actually sending to another block and then you would set the direction so for example we're testing if it can go downwards so we would set this direction and then add a up direction like this so that would basically be what you needed and once you have that, um, basically any remainder, uh, the amount that it can actually send is going to be saved to this variable. And then what you would do is you would go ahead and replace these two variables here with, or these uh, number variables with the amount that you would need to extract. So test send down and test send down. So basically that would be the system that you would need. Now obviously there's certain things um, that you would probably end up um, using for this particular procedure. Like this is just like a rough idea of how to use the blocks. I'm not covering how to make the machines and stuff like that yet. Um, those like for example a machine itself uh, that might do uh, something that's like mining or something like that, that's going to take a lot different system than something that's going to be like a furnace. A furnace is going to be tied in with a GUI and all the other stuff where a simple mining block will maybe just like break blocks directly below it or something like that. Um, so that's more kind of dynamic, but you would basically be testing if the block has enough energy, if it can um, basically run based on that energy and then basically your script and everything would be tied in based on if it has energy or not. So that's kind of that part. And then generators, they just send as much as they can to the block below. So this would probably be what you would need. Actually, you wouldn't even need the extract part because it's just generating energy passively. So uh, you wouldn't need to um, extract any energy from the block because it wouldn't have an actual storage thing. It doesn't need one. So um, as far as the cables, those are a little bit more confusing. Those need to extract and send based on the direction. That part's all covered because I've created the workspace. It's pretty complex to set up and it's also very complex to, for when I made it. So I don't expect people to understand how it all works and stuff. It just needs to be set up in a very specific way and everything else will fall into place. So that leaves us to the forge fluid blocks, which are below here. So we have the drain. Now, like I said, below or before uh, the extract is very similar to the send. And that's no different than the drain for the extract and fill for the uh, thing. Now this will have to do with the forge fluid. Now your block would need to accept forge fluid in order to basically use these blocks. Um, but those are basically the exact same thing from this one up here. Now, if you wanted to fill the block with it, then you would basically select your custom fluid. Say you want lava, then it would basically be in that particular part and I just froze oh no I didn't I can still delete it that's good um, so you could basically um, set the, the fluid and then set it to that particular thing now as far as different tanks are considered um, that might be a little bit more uh, confusing to actually set up uh, I have had requests for doing different tanks and stuff like that I'm not sure how the tank system works because there isn't actually a way to specify the tanks in here so i'm not sure really how to send it like if you were to fill it doesn't have any tank uh, particular thing it doesn't say what tank number or anything like that so i'm not sure exactly how that all works 
per se, but um, I could create something in the future that would uh, be variable based, um, like MBT version, and you would be, be able to have as many tanks as you want through that particular method. Now, that would still require you to drain the MBT value and then send it over to another thing, which is a little bit more complicated, but it could work. Um, I mean, I created cables before, I would probably have to create uh, fluid um, pipes as well, so that's always an option, but I haven't gotten to that point yet because it's a lot more confusing than just making a simple cable. But um, basically you have the capacity, which is the exact same thing as the capacity up here, and tank level. Again, I'm not sure how this plays in because we don't actually have a way to specify the tanks or send it into a specific one, so I'm not sure how that works, but that allows you to test for the level of the tank. And then the number of tanks you can test here. And then there's test drain. So same thing as these test extract and test sending, uh, test drain and test fill. So test fill would be allowing you to test fill the energy for that particular thing. You could do that to a specific side of the block maybe, and then pass it over to uh, cables to transport that fluid. So that would probably work. Um, otherwise, that's pretty much it. Now, the only thing I need to cover is the blocks themselves, because you will need to enable a couple things for your blocks. So we'll just create a quick block, and then we'll go to the uh, two things that you'll need for this. You'll need to make sure that your tick rate is set to one uh, for the block itself, and you want to enable uh, the block entity. Uh, you can leave the stuff, I usually, like the inventory and stuff, I usually disable this because I don't really use that particular thing on fluid energy. But um, if you needed to keep it in for like a GUI or whatever, you can do that if you wanted to. And then the fluid and, um, or energy and fluid storage. So if you're going to be basically using the energy and fluid, you need to make sure this is linked. You need a tick rate. For this this is like mandatory for it to work and then you need to check these boxes here for whatever ones you're going to be using so if you're using fluid make sure this box is checked and then fill out the maximum fluid capacity so this is basically what your uh, fluid will basically be able to use and then you would have your uh, restricted accept accepted fluid so basically anything that you can send through that pipe you would basically fill into here um, and then we have the energy storage. This is a little bit different. Um, for example, the internal energy, if you wanted it to always have energy when it's first placed down, then what you would do is you basically set how much energy you wanted to it to have when it's first placed down here. Then you have the maximum energy capacity. This is how much the block will actually be able to receive. Now, in most cases, what you want to do is you want to make sure that it works with your cables. Um, because cables are um, not supposed to design to have a lot of capacity, you want to make sure that the um, amount that you're actually sending from your cables and stuff are a reasonable amount. So for example, if your cables are uh, 128, now, I have made a modular system so you guys can follow if you wanted to, but then you would want to make sure that the maximum send and maximum receive are 128 as well. So this will make sure that it will send it as fast through the pipe system as possible um, as long as it has a sturdy energy capacity. So like if as long as there's energy available, it'll be sending it through. Um, for something like a battery, you probably want something like a higher capacity. So like, I don't know, 1000 or something like that. You can have it as high as you want, um, depending on what it will, uh, what you'll need. You probably want to calculate what you want for the, the time for it to like to actually fill up. Now the time that it will fill up will be still this time that it will drain. So for example, if you're cables are sending 128 a time that you might want to multiply that by like 20 and then multiply that by like 60 and then you would have like a minute for uh, actual use depending on you know how much energy actually needs to be used so that would allow you to drain like a minute worth of stuff and then you can always wait for that 
energy to kick back in and fill up the block. So you might want to do that for your energy capacity for your batteries. That would at least allow you to have a fluent um, amount of energy in your system, even though it might take a long time to fill up but any excess that doesn't get used can always fill up as well. So um, as far as machines, uh, you don't really need a high capacity for them. You can just set it the same as the cables. As long as you're using what you're, you need for your thing, that's all the capacity you really need. I would probably double that amount. So if your um, machine requires like 64 power for use, uh, each, each iteration of it actually doing something, then you would basically want to make sure that it's probably double that for its capacity so it has the next amount ready. So for example, 128 would be perfect for that because 64 plus 64 is 128. So that would basically be that part. The maximum receive and maximum send is basically just telling the block uh, when you do the test thing, uh, again, the test blocks like this, um, how much it can actually basically send and stuff like that. So it will basically go, okay, I can send that much. And then it will basically go and it will send only that amount. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, most of your stuff will be on a tick update for the most part. You might need to set some variables to when the block is added for MBT and stuff like that. Um, other than that, everything should be run through your tick update for the most part because everything should be automated. So you don't really need anything particular for everything else. So just make sure that you create a tick update and run all your script through here. Hopefully that covers all the blocks at the moment. It's, it's been informative and stuff like that. Maybe consider subscribing. Uh, we'll cover the cables next episode and how they work and how to set them up. And then I will basically move on to some different types of machines, like machines, generators, and we'll throw in um, a battery system as well. So then you guys have the basic understanding how all that works. Outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.